today and I'm delighted to see you all here. And uh, this is just going to run through some of the vital things I think are important to know about the Industry Mentoring Network and STEM programme. And uh, we'll start with the um, acknowledgement of country. And I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the Macquarie University land, the Watamatagal clan of the Dark Nation, whose cultures and customs have nurtured and continue to nurture this land since the dream time. We pay our respects to elders past, present and future. So these are a few of the things we're going to run through today, but it's a fairly easy going uh, information session. I want you to be able to pop in with any questions you have during the time we have together. I wanted to make it 30 minutes so uh, people feel easy to pop in and be able to go and get on with their day. Um, you know, I am here for a little bit longer if we do go a little bit longer afterwards, but I'll try and complete this within 30 minutes so we make best use of the time. But please pop in with any questions. Um, I'm very happy to hear along the way. So in terms of the program, um, you may have heard, you may have probably seen a few emails about you know, the actual program. You may have spoken to a few of the mentees um, in your faculties. And uh, I, I've, I've noticed people doing the applications. And if you've ever done a Qualtrics survey, you'll notice where some people get maybe stuck. And um, I've noticed that maybe people are looking at some of the ATSI um, forum activities and may think, oh, my um, area of research doesn't fit with that. And um, I wanted to maybe spend a bit of time talking about, you know, what kind of STEM disciplines are included in the in this program this year. So in the past, um, you know, we've asked people and in the current expression of interest form, we ask people about the objectives. What kind of things do they want to get from the mentoring program? And in the application form, which I'll cover in a few minutes, I'm very happy for you to spend a bit of time on the objectives there. You can put in quite a bit of information, but if you wanted to put in one or two words, that actually works for me too. They can be very short and brief. But this is what other INNIS mentees have hoped to get from the program. You can see it's pretty diverse. Um, industry stands out, of course, and that's really good to see because this program is very much focused on helping candidates learn a lot more about industry before they graduate their PhD. People want to look at networking, they want to grow their connections, they want to meet other people, uh, they want to learn new skills, they want to learn about sectors. Um, you know, they're talking about in academia and being in academia, and I suppose learning more um, about how their research impacts on academia. But there's lots of good reasons to be involved in this program, and it allows for a diverse number of perspectives and objectives from the program. So what is in this? And I'll just move my uh, video over here. Um, it's a national program. It's been running since about 2017, 2018. It allows for candidates to be matched with a high level industry le leader, a mentor in a one year mentoring program. And in terms of mentoring, you know, this is one thing you might hear, or I definitely hear in my sphere is that, you know, um, you should find a mentor, you know, and, you know, you should ask people to be your mentor. And that's not a, an easy thing to do. I definitely appreciate that. Not everybody has a, a wide circle or even people, you know, to spend the time cold calling a mentor or reaching out to them on LinkedIn. It takes a significant amount of time to find someone that is in the area that you want to be in, possibly when you graduate, or people who are aligned with your interests. And as well as in this takes the, the work out of that for you. It helps you understand that, uh, or it helps you match people. There's somebody looking at a bespoke uh, matching of you to somebody who is in, who is aligned with your objectives and your interests. And that is the value of, the, of this program. Over the year, you also get to be part of uh, state level events and networking events. Um, generally, they are now have been online, I'm afraid, because of COVID, um, but in past they have been in person. And if we do in the next 12 months have a return to more in-person events, hopefully you'll be able to participate in the New South Wales ones. But the beauty, I suppose, of the online ones is that you can step into a uh, South Australia online activity or you know somewhere in Melbourne or Queensland. 
So you can access, you know, other online events in this the current online uh, hybrid way we're working at the moment. So um, there's support year round from myself and from the Inness program. They're there to help you with any questions you may have, how to develop a good relationship with your mentor. They have high level resources. So there's a lot of value attached to the program. So just to go into a bit more detail about what Inness is, and maybe what Inness isn't, uh, as I said, students are mapped to a high level industry leader and they meet with them for at least once per month, but it can be more, um, ideally face to face, and of course, they came off, uh, came up, went online last year, um, especially starting off mid last year. And it, it was good to see that the actual program continued to go, um, even though it was all fully online. And um, so you're able to meet with your mentor. They may meet with you more than once, but at least once a month is definitely the guideline that we would like people to come on board for. There's some self-assessment and clear guidelines provided in the lead up to the first meeting. So. They're mentioned in the last bullet point there, we have, or they have a mentor loop software, which um, you can use as a platform to contact your mentor and access all different kinds of resources, um, but allows you to assess yourself and match yourself, or be matched, I should say, with a, a good mentor. And as I said, Innis provides ongoing support. So the events and education, what's different from last year is in addition to the five, five state level events and activities, you also have five professional development workshops. And um, this is a nice add on to a really good program and it adds a lot more value. There's an induction workshop to make sure you know how to, you know, before you start, what to expect, um, how to connect well with your mentor. So there's good support at the start and throughout the program. So moving on to who is it actually for? Um, and this I, can sometimes be a bit of a stumbling block, but I, I suppose ideally people in this are looking for people in their second year because you're in that sweet spot where you've completed your confirmation of candidature. Um, that normally can, it can depend on your faculty and that can sometimes be between nine months to a year and you, um, you go to a, to a formal process uh, where you're a confirmed candidate for your PhD. So to make sure that maybe you're not, there's a, you know, a risk of you transitioning to another university during that time, or we maybe decide a PhD is not for you. That's the reason why we have this particular eligibility criteria. It's just to make sure that you're here. We know you're going to be here for the next 12 months um, and that you've been, gone through that process. And you have at least nine months left on your PhD. If you are, if it's a 12 month program and we'll get to the value of the cost of the program and the reasons why we'd like you to stick around in the program for these 12 months, because if, for instance, you were to finish in the next six months, um, maybe, you know, submit your thesis and then go through your examination uh, procedure, um, your need for a mentor may not be there anymore. You may um, want to start working. Maybe you won't have time to commit to it anymore. Not to say that you're not busy right now. But if, for instance, um, you, you're not in your actual current candidature for the, at least the next nine months, we can't be sure that maybe you'll get the best uh, value from the program. So that's why we say, um, you know, it, it's good to have at least nine months. Now, what if you don't meet the above criteria, but you're still motivated to learn about industry? And the reason why I put in your expected thesis submission date is to give me an idea to kind of gauge, well, you know, it's not quite nine months, or maybe um, you're not actually confirmed. Maybe you're a few weeks off being confirmed because some people have already applied and said that to me. And that gives me an idea, OK, well, maybe by June you'll be confirmed. And that gives me the sense, well, this is still worth pursuing, your application that is. And I can, you know, get updated by the faculty to know when that process will finish and that everything is, you know, set up. So that's the reason why um, I thought it'd be good to look at the eligibility criteria together, just in case you think of a stumbling block. And if you don't meet the both criteria, but I feel you've put in a very strong application, I want to talk to you and see what I can do. And maybe there's next things, there's other things around that I can point you in the right direction for if the Innis program is not something that's right for you right now. Because it's really just in our interest to make sure that you get opportunities to engage in industry while you're here. 
So, and just finally, I suppose on this slide, all STEM PhDs and those whose research has STEM impact. And I wanted to mention that because we've had, you know, and you'll see in the next slide where our candidates have come from. And we've had some from um, the business school, we've had them from the Faculty of Arts, where you may imagine like, you know, people don't think generally that will, people will have a STEM background, but we have had candidates come who have an engineering background, or they're looking at um, climate, change, climate change or carbon footprints, um, and their actuarial studies are helping them achieve these goals. And they're quite STEM uh, related impacts. So that's why we'd like to hear from you. If, if you think you're kind of maybe not um, quite STEM specific, that you can, you know, put your hand up and tell us, like, you know, I'm not, am I sure, you know, this is the right one for me? Andy, I see your hand up. Would you like to ask a question? Yeah, I just want to ask, uh, you know, I'm in the second year of my PhD. Which of these three items should I pick? The second one? Or the first one. Um, I have you, finished the second year. You finished second year, and yeah. you have at least nine months in your PhD. Exactly. Okay. Um, you can pick the second yeah. one and the first one. You can tick tick all that apply. So, and if you um, you know, I think that's that's fine. That I I can check our systems to see where people are in their PhDs, but it helps me um understand yeah. a bit more quickly when I skim them. So, yeah, because I just sent this application to you and just wondering if I can modify it again or not. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like it'll work. That sounds good. Okay, fine. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. So any other questions on eligibility? Again, you can let me know. Uh, I have a question I already sent in the chat. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm probably not able to see it. <laughs> I feel like a bit of a disaster today. I'm sorry. You may need to put your hand up and call it out. Is that Sina speaking? Am I saying your name right? Yeah, Heather, it's me. Who is it, sorry? Heather, it's okay. Let me raise my hand so you can. Okay, uh, I think I hear you. Yeah, so yeah, my question is, is if a student has uh, less than nine months left, let's say six months, so mm -hmm. can he benefit from this program or not? It's, it's, it would be difficult for me to probably put you through the next stage. Um, but in that sense, I would, you know, you need to just maybe let me know what your expected submission date is. And then I suppose from your expected, it can be, you know, a pretty, hard time to commit to other things as well, especially if you're coming to the final stages of your PhD. Um, so if let's say you're on the cusp of um, say eight or nine, you're kind of in that gray area, it might be easier. But if you want to put in a application, I will certainly review and I'll get back to everybody with a potential, um, you know, what is the next best thing for you? What can be, you know, another option if if you're looking at industry engagement before you graduate or after you graduate you're looking at an industry career what other things could you do right now and that may be me assisting you with your resume maybe looking at your LinkedIn profile maybe connecting you with someone who you know talking about information interviews talking to someone that could help you with your industry and um, career uh, ambitions um, but I would say if you have you know less than six months it would probably be hard for me to um, process your application to the next stage. Okay, thank you. No problem, Heida. Trudy, I see your hand up. Yes, um, so I was just wondering, I'm only in my first year of PhD and obviously I, I saw the invite for this and I'm really interested. Is it something that I should wait until next year? to do and if so can I get the information I'd be fall in that bottom box and would I can get more information so that I can learn more about it so when will you be confirmed Trudy um yeah. is that month at six I started in January so it would be what would be June July okay yeah, yeah it's probably um next year's program that will probably be more suitable for you um if you start in January this year yes 
So I would recommend 2022, 2023 program. It starts in June. Yeah. Um, and you said you want to know how you can get more information in the meantime, is it? Yes, that's right. Yeah, definitely stay connected to me if you want to look at the page, the website page. We keep information up there. Um, I'm more likely to, and our iLearn page is a really good place to look at for information for illness. But I generally um, send out an email to all PhDs every year, regardless of faculty or uh, time in their PhD, just to make sure they're aware of it. And like yourself, you, you know, you become aware of it and you'll be ready next year or you'll be, you know, you'll know next year that this is an opportunity that is probably, you know, a good one for you. Yeah, great. Thank you. No problem, Judy. Okay. I see another hand up, but I see a student ID, I think. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, probably uh, I want to use the three months extension because of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, because of that, uh, I meet the at least nine months of can 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 teacher in my PhD remaining. Mm -hmm. Can I apply for this? Uh, uh... I would say it, it sounds kind of like you you may be able to be eligible for the program if you have at least nine months. Um, it's usually from you know the June time onwards where we start we kick off um but around this time is where i know i'm saying april is this is where we are in line with from here but you know if you know for this particular for your particular application i would say you don't meet the above criteria tick that third option and put in your expected um, thesis submission oh, okay. date yeah okay thank you no problem thank you okay we'll probably move on and so just to confirm where people generally come from, you know, in terms of faculties, what we have here is um, the, the, the generally where people have come from. So you can see here we've got, you know, the vast majority have come from Faculty of Science and Engineering generally. And then second after that, we've got the Faculty of uh, Medicine, Health, Human Sciences. And here there was just one from FOHS on both those years. And then we've had, you know, a couple from MQBS and some from Faculty of Arts, which is also good to see as well. So even though they are smaller numbers, I'm always happy to see applications from diverse faculties where, you know, they have a STEM background or a STEM impact in research. So these were the ATSI STEM priorities you might have seen in the exam, the expression of interest. And, uh, Previously, Innes was just for two streams. They had the MedTech program and they had the Energy Minerals program. And people from computing would still be involved with these, you know, um, but it was still, it was for quite narrow. But this year they've opened up to all STEM disciplines. Um, at the um, Australian Academy for Technology, Science and Engineering, they have a number of priority discipline areas. And these are the ones that are listed here. And in the expression of interest form, you would see the um, research disciplines that closely align with these ones. And I suppose I've put it in there so people know um, where it, it's more helpful for me and maybe to for Imnis to understand, okay, you do align with these areas. But if you don't see yourself fitting into one of them, that's okay too. Let me know in the uh, the last box other STEM area, which area actually you feel you're affiliated to. And then there's also a, a part of the expression of interest form that you can tell me a bit more about you, uh, more additional information. So what I would say, it's not limited to the below STEM areas, but it helps me understand, you know, this is where our applica applicants are feeling more aligned to, and um, it fits with the, the general programme more specifically. So you know, don't be put off by looking at that list and saying, I don't fit, but um, please look at it and think, well, I think it's digital futures, but I'm not sure. And if you're not sure, you can all, you're always welcome to put it in the other area in that box that I put in the expression of interest form. So in terms of, like, as I said previously, you know, the expression of interest form, I've seen people stop at this area and I feel like it may be it was too much information on the form. I'm happy to get the feedback on that, but it is just useful information. If it doesn't apply, please put in the, the other STEM area. 
Um, you know, in terms of potential future roles here, if you don't put in industry roles, um, I won't discount your application. If this is really just an opportunity to think about your career and why you might get into industry, and it gives me an idea of, you know, if you're if you've really thought about specific roles where you see yourself, um, and you know, don't spend too much time, you know, thinking about it, but somewhere you think, you know, industry where you might apply. The Menti objectives. You can list them quite briefly here. Um, I'm looking for you to do the, the form and get it to me quickly. Um, I'm trying not to deliberate in too much. Um, the last part is optional in terms of additional information, which is form for characters. Um, even though it's optional, I always find, you know, really interesting information that tells me a lot about the person. Um, you, it's not a huge space to add in more information. That's why I've made it form for characters. I don't want to make the form too onerous. But I want people to tell, if, if you can, I think it's really good to spend a bit of time on saying why you feel this, this uh, program is for you. Uh, sorry, may I ask a question regarding the previous slide? Yeah. The previous one. Slide, uh, number, slide yeah. number nine. Yeah, here. Uh -huh. Regarding those discipline areas. Uh, actually, what if we in line with more than one of these areas, for example, you know, um, as I feel this this form, I know that I cannot pick more than one, but and uh, there were no any option to just put a comment or something like that if we in line with more than one area. Yeah. Yeah. Good feedback, Hadi. Thanks. Um, maybe next time I'll make it multiple, so you can select more than one actually. But um, you know, yeah, if you can pick the one that best aligns with your um, area. Um, that works for me um, if you can, but it's good to know this crossover. Yeah. Cool. So, just to let you know a little bit about the process. Um, so, right now I've been calling since the end of February, and we'll close the applications next Thursday. And what happens then is I would. Um, Send that list, before I send it to IMNIS, I would send it to the faculties and their department, specific, your specific department you're attached to, and ask them about the fees associated with it. Now, since the beginning of the programme, mentees have not been out of pocket for this programme. It comes from generally HDR funds. And that's why I have to go back to them and ask them, are you um, satisfied with supporting the $200 plus GST fee per mentee? Now, there is also a program fee that the um, HDR training and partnerships also fund as well. And on average, the cost is about $750 to, you know, put a mentee into this program. So it's um, a significant cost, um, and it, but it's huge value. So certainly if you're, you know, thinking about being part of the program either this year or next year, I would definitely, um, you know, suggest I wouldn't... Um, overlook that value it is significant cost so being part of the program is you know a great opportunity so um considerable you know there's not this opportunity you can always put it on your linkedin account that you're a mentee you know so it's a significant value and of cost so um but i wouldn't say be afraid of the the value or you know the the fee that we ask the faculty to pay for it's something that you know generally we found that this has been no issue but that's why we share your um, your name and we just we don't share the application as such. But we would say, you know, for instance, Hadi would say we'll go to your department and say, are you OK to fund these um, these mentees? And, uh, you know, we would then take that list to IMNIS and IMNIS would then, you know, import you into their mentor platform. And then they would start matching, matching you with their with your mentor. And then you're finalized by June. So you would meet with your mentee by then, and then you'd also be able to be part of the launch events in June. And then from year round, you can start meeting with your mentor for 12 months. So essentially you start in June and you finish in the June the following year. So that's generally how it works in terms of the lead up to the program and when you expect to finish. 
these are some of our in this dynamic deals which you would have seen in our HDRO Matters newsletter. So um, we have some uh, candidates from well, from the former human sciences, and you can look up these. I have the links on um, our iLearn page, and I'll have them sent to you as well here. But it tells the story about the kind of mentors that our mentees have been matched with. And as you can see, some pretty high profile organizations and pretty high level um, titles. Uh, people who are very busy, you know, got a lot of experience under the belt, but are still making time as volunteer mentors, part of this program. So you have Minomic International, which you may be familiar with, they're on campus here. And you've got AbV, which I think is also in the park. And you've got Johnson & Johnson, which is just down the road from us here. So just to give you an idea of the kind of um, organisations our mentees are matched with. And as being a mentee, you also get to put your online platform or your, sorry, your online profile up on the, um, the website. In this has a mentor network, you can see here. And, you know, you can use that link to link to your own LinkedIn, to put on your email signature, uh, to share with people, which tells them why you're part of the program, what your research is. So this is all good ways of sharing and exposing and building your connections and growing your network. Um, on the next page, you'll see some of our previous mentees um, from different faculties. You might recognize Geraldine, who was our 3MT winner last year. Um, Reba, who took part in our innovative competition as well. And uh, there's another industry engagement opportunity coming up in June. Um, Nikolai from Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences, uh, Vicky and Lee. So, um, you know, we've had some really good, uh, you know, outcomes from the programme. People have told us they really enjoy it. And, you know, I suppose mentoring to me is a long term thing or, you know, growing your network generally through having a mentor is a long term thing. What you do with that relationship and how you grow it from, you know, the 12 months you have with that mentor. Um, it can be a slow process. So, you know, starting now before you graduate, thinking about, you know, your first year and your second year, what can you be doing to grow your network is time well spent, in my uh, opinion. So it's uh, good to think about, you know, is this program for you? And if not this program, where are your network, you know, connections that can help you now? Who can be a good mentor? Who can, you know, um, get you into the right space for your career ambition? So um, definitely think about your networking and, and mentoring um, journey as a long term commitment and a long term journey. So if you want to know more information, there was an expression of interest in your emails. I think I've bombarded people with emails, it feels like I've sent them everywhere through your own email, through your faculties. Um, then you can also go onto our iLearn site. You can find our link through our web page. Uh, you can have a look at the Inlist website. Um, just back to our iLearn site, you'll see some videos there of a previous mentee, Melina Heron. You'll have some uh, podcasts with Luke Mills, who is the J&J &J, uh, mentee. So some good um, information and a great breadth of information to find out people's experiences. So I think that's us now. And um, we're just oh, we're a little bit over time, I'm afraid, but I'm happy to take some questions now, or if you need to head off, um, that's fine too. And uh, maybe if I stop sharing, I might be able to see some questions in the chat. Uh, I've just seen one, so and I think I've answered that, Hayder. So um, any other questions before we finish up? Um, yeah. Hi, Catherine. I have a question about the meetup with M Mentor. So I'm just wondering, is it just meet up and do networking, or is there a chance that we can work as an intern in the industry or something? Good question, Kwan. Um, so when you meet with your mentor, they'll ask you about the kind of things that you want to know more, maybe about the industry sector they're working in, or a connected industry sector. Um, the goals and objectives of your mentoring journey are very specific and tailored to what you want to get out of it. So if you wanted maybe more help 
with tailoring your resume to um, industry for, you know, applying for jobs after you graduate or maybe during your uh, PhD. They would look at that with you. They might help you with your interview skills. Um, they might help you with your presentation skills. So it can be very specific to what you find important and valuable. And in terms of uh, being an intern, the I suppose the program at the moment, they have talked about, ATSI have talked about an internship program, but it wouldn't be specifically with your mentor. It may be with a connected, um, you might have heard of APR Intern. APR Intern is now being uh, transitioned to ATSI. So there could be opportunities um, that you may hear of before. You know, you might be in that network, so you're going to hear more communications about internships. But it's not a, IMNIS itself is not a job placement program. Okay, got it. Thank you. No problem. I thought I heard someone else trying to ask a question as well there. Uh, excuse me, is there any limitation for the number of applications you're going to accept in this program for this year or not, or all people who are eligible will be accepted? Well, we have typically, as you can see there, we've had, um, we had 13 last year, we had 20 the year before, we had 23 the year before. Um, it can depend on faculty funds. So, that's why I suppose it's limited and competitive in that respect. We'd like to fund everybody that comes forward, but it's um, it does depend on whether the faculty can actually fund the fees. So, you know, as you know, times have been particularly um, hard financially for universities generally, but um, I feel confident about um, faculties funding applications this year. Um, people are very willing to... Um, consider applications so I wouldn't um, be put off by that we would uh, definitely try and encourage faculties to speak to us where there you know maybe challenges in funding so just to say that we can't allow everybody but generally I would like to see you know I would like to progress everybody that's eligible in my mind um, but uh, it, it does it depend on faculties approving um, I see. funding. I see. Okay, thank you. No problem. So if we don't have any more questions, I really do appreciate everybody showing up today. And I'm sorry we took a little bit more time, but I think it's been really valuable. If there is any more questions, please get in touch with me. You're welcome to use my own email address, catherine.ns.mq.edu.au. You may see in a lot of the emails I've sent that uh, I've put in our general inbox. Uh, prof dev hdr um prof dev hdr mq.edu.au as well uh thank you china hope i'm saying your name correctly and uh thanks again and please stay in touch if you have any more questions we're very happy to hear from you bye-bye bye thank you thanks catherine see you bye-bye thank you bye